Hi guys and welcome to another Surface RT video and this video is all about the Windows App Store. Of course all tablets and mobile devices these days have a App Store of some description and Windows has its very own and this may very well make or break the operating system as at the moment it doesn't have many applications but it's building quickly so we'll have a look at how this store is going to begin with. Now one thing that we must do before we even really investigate the App Store is make sure that your App Store is set up to search for all the applications it possibly can do. I had some problems early on with the App Store whereby I had apparently put on two settings which severely limited uh, what my uh, tablet could search for. So the preferences here, which I will show you, are make it easier to find apps in my preferred language and make it easier to find applications that include accessibility features I basically turned both of them off to make sure that it's showing every, applica every application available because when I had one or both of them on I was getting very few applications I would search for example for Star Wars Angry Birds and I would get absolutely no results even though I knew the application existed so that's just one little tip for you to make sure that you're uh, hopefully finding all the possible apps. So when we first go into the store this is what you will see. You will see a spotlight which isn't a category it just shows you the top three applications and the new releases. If I scroll from left to right as many of the Windows applications do you can see that I'm going through different categories photos, music and video, sport and so on and I can do this for quite a long time actually as you can see many swipes but there are still categories coming up and eventually we will get to the end which is education and government. So one early little criticism is that there is no other way to sort through categories you have to simply swipe and then go through them like that. The one thing you can do is shrink the screen by pinching in and it will give you a slightly smaller uh, category list so you can get through them quicker but even so it would have been nice to maybe drag up from there uh, or go go to the settings or something and being able to quickly pick up all the categories maybe in one list but it's not to be. Let's have a look then at Spotlight and if I press on top three you'll see a, a brief breakdown of what's available. We've got 98 applications here and this is showing you generally uh, all the things that are available. Skype's there, eBay, Wikipedia, Kindle. So there are quite a number of uh, popular applications around. Oh, let's just press the button there by accident. I don't need to know the time, thank you very much. Um, something that's missing at the moment, no official Facebook app, no official Twitter app. There are already alternatives, but one thing I must say is that the power of this tablet is that it has an exceptional browser and you can get away with using Facebook basically from a website and if I had the choice I would always use a website. So excellent um, web uh, support so it's not necessarily too much of a bad thing and again that extends to things like Wikipedia there may be an application for it here but it's not a particularly good application compared to the website which works just as well on this large tablet with a powerful browser so that's one thing to consider that you don't always need an application uh, with a Windows tablet. Uh, okay let's uh, go into a bit more detail on a specific app let's just choose Skype for example and I'm going to download Skype because I need it anyway um, we have a description here, we have the ratings. Now this application has had a lot of ratings, 3,782. And that's quite rare because most applications have much less uh, community feedback on it. So you get much, much less of a gauge of how good an application is. Sometimes you'll find a lot of applications that have five stars and that's simply because they've had one review which is possibly the developer and his friends. Um, so looking a bit more detail at the description of the application you do get some screenshots no videos which is a shame because uh, Android market has videos and it's a shame because it means you won't see any of my videos on uh, people's applications pages which is a bit of a shame but it does give you an overview and a description some features um, 
it gives you a lot of details. This one in particular has got a lot of details because it's an official Microsoft application, I guess, such as release notes, supported processes, languages, so on. And then uh, reviews. There's lots of reviews for this one, so it's a, a lot to really uh, take in. Now, on this one, uh, we have the simple option to install because it's free. So if I press install, and we'll let it do its thing. As you can see now, there's a little um, couple of dots going along the top. Um, I guess that just means it's processing. It doesn't necessarily tell you how well the install is going. What you have to do is actually press on this top right hand button here when it says install in Skype and then you can actually get a breakdown of how fast the download is occurring. You don't, you usually in um, Apple and Android, you will see that on screen, but you have to actually go into a special screen to see how well the app is downloading. So it should download and install very soon. Uh, what I'm going to do now is try and find an application that I have to pay for. As you can see now the install is finished and it's telling me that Skype has been installed. Uh, I could press on that and go to the application if I wanted to. However, one thing we are, uh, it always does is it creates a new tile on the extreme right of your start screen so you can start using it if you want to. Let's quickly go back to the store now. And what I'm going to choose is uh, games that have are either free or have a trial on them. So if I go to Angry Birds Star Wars, what we have here, which is a, a nice feature which we don't see uh, too often in Apple and Android, is the option to actually try something before you buy it. So it gives you a trial. Uh, now, I, I'm not sure how long the trial is. I don't know if it's uh, predetermined by the application or it's a seven day trial or what, but there doesn't need to be any information here, so if anyone does know the answers to that, uh, please let me know and I can add it to the description in the video. But really I could just download this and try it, uh, and I presume at some point it will say that I need to um, purchase the application after a couple of days use, or I may get to a certain level, and then it would say oh, I'd need to purchase, purchase something. So that is a nice addition that you do have um, trials on uh, not all applications, but many of the applications. As you can see, I just did a search for free and trial, and we've got quite a few applications here which do cost money, uh, but are actually available for trial as well. I wonder if I can... I can't sort by trial, which is unfortunate. But plenty of options, and it's a nice addition. Another point I wanted to make about the application pages themselves is that once you're inside one, there's no real easy way to navigate away from it. And what I mean by this is, yes, it's all very well looking at this News Republic um, application, but what if I wanted to know about other applications that are similar to this, or um, suggestions from uh, people have downloaded this, but they also downloaded another similar application. There's no, uh, I suppose, putting together of different strands of the uh, App Store. You can't jump from News Republic to say maybe a BBC News website and then uh, an, an RSS news feeder down there. It's, it's not interchangeable at the moment, which is a bit disappointing. If I want to go and look at news um, applications, then I've got to back out of this one, back out of a search, uh, back out of another application I was looking at, and so on. And then I can go back to the main store and perhaps look at news and weather applications that way. So it's just a, a little bit of a shame that you kind of find yourself going down um, cul-de-sacs within the application, within the App Store, and then having to sort of back out in reverse. It's a bit of a, a disappointing, clunky way of navigating. So that's a brief introduction, I think, to the App Store. Um, now that I've fixed my initial problem of not being able to find any apps, I'm actually, I actually am finding that there's some quite nice apps available. Obviously there's still a very limited amount, but it is going to be increasing uh, significantly, exponentially really, over certainly the next six months. And so we'll get to get a good gauge of how well um, the App Store is going to be. But I will stress again that uh, a lot of applications that you do need on other operating systems you can get away with just using the websites, so uh, bear that in mind, if there is a website alternative, it's a very good alternative. So thanks for watching guys, if you do have any questions about the App Store, please do ask, I'll see if I can do some more specific um, investigations in future videos, and I'm sure I will do a further video update on the App Store when I learn more about it. See you soon in another Surface RT video.